Okay, uh, thanks everybody for uh, joining this committee call. And uh, we are kicking off uh, uh, now the, uh, the meeting. Uh, and uh, we are sharing here the um, collaborative notes. So if uh, everyone uh, uh, cannot speak and uh, would like to contribute in a written form, you can also directly type here. Um, and uh, OK, so I'm giving the floor to Ali Papadopoulou to start uh, this uh, committee call. Thank, thank you. you. I, I will follow up with a, uh, with a round table then, Julia. And thank you very much for supporting today's event. Julia is actually uh, participating at another event, which is across uh, the Atlantic. And it's very early for her at the moment, but she insisted that she will be there because she really wants to see uh, and take part in the discussion. So thank you. Thank you, Julia. Um, yeah, so, I mean, uh, let, let's start with, uh, let me see, with no particular order as how I see the participants list. So please don't, don't get offended. It's not me, it's Zoom to blame. Um, Alan, ah, you, you already said that you don't have microphone or, um, yes, or audio. But Alan, you're from um, EPFL, uh, at least I know you, so I can maybe introduce you. <laughs> You can type. Okay, good, good. Let's 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 do that. Yeah. No, that's not the one. This is a good uh, test to see who, who writes quicker. I know I wouldn't be the quickest. I would fail. Uh, yeah, from EPFL Library, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, uh, active in data management support, yes. And this is actually how I know uh, Alan, uh, like we met two years ago, I think. We still ha have uh, things to, to finish, I'm reminded. <laughs> But let's uh, let's see now with the new um, involvement um, of um, the software, we can definitely uh, allow more things uh, for the template. Uh, where am I? Again, let's open the list. Nice to see you here, Alan. Next, I see Diego Morga Morgavi. Please feel free to open mic, camera, whatever you feel comfortable, or type. Okay, also, yeah, I go. Uh... INRE, okay, okay, I see, I see the chat from INRE. And not available to speak for, for this meeting. So no worries, uh, you can always uh, listen. Uh, nice to, nice to also have you here. Uh, Joaquim. Yes. Um, so I'm Joachim Philipson from Stockholm University. I've been working with research data management since October 2016. And uh, in also with uh, DMPs, uh, with uh, in particular with um, DMP online service and in that function, it has been very interesting to follow uh, Argos uh, on the side to to compare, uh, and uh, so I I'll try to follow the development of, of this tool. But uh, I have to confess that recently I have been devoted to other tasks, so I haven't work much on it, but I, I'm eager to catch up on what's new. So thank you. Good. Thanks, Joaquin. Uh, then we have uh, Jung from Spain. Hello. Yes, uh, my name is Johnny with the EAS. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Johnny. Oh, never mind, Eddie. It's okay. I, I, yeah. I from the emails. I, we don't yeah, have yeah. Uh, pronunciation. <laughs> I know, I know. 
Eguala en Dione Rita Jauregui, librería en la Mondragón Universidad de Uya a Very Little University eh, in the northern, northern part of Spain, the Basque Country. And we have started eh, last course eh, talking about DMPs and eh, helping our researchers with, with their DMPs because the European Commission is asking them uh, in the grant agreements. So we are very new and we are, well, we have uh, just translated the uh, Argos to our language. We have a, a not even, um, a, um, we have, we speak Spanish also, but we speak Basque is our um, country language. So a re regional language, I mean. And we are working with Ellie, and we are very grateful to her because we she's helping us very much. But we are very new, so uh, wishing to learn as much as possible. Thank you, John. And then I have oh, it changed. Why did it change? Ah, uh, Maria, Maria. Maria Kodopir. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Maria Kodopidi. I work with Ailey uh, in Athena Research Center. And uh, I met providing tests uh, for Argos uh, to assure the quality. Thank you, Maria. Maria is every day living for testing Argos and making sure that the quality of the software that we release is, is fine. Thank you. Thank you, Maria, so much for the dedication uh, and enthusiasm also uh, in your role. Um, then we have, um, again, sorry if I mispronounce uh, your name, uh, Saha? Uh, well, you're not going to, you, you're not able to correct me. Uh, which is okay. I'll I'll go with uh, uh Zurcher from a uh, special advisor in data management from the Royal Danish Library in Denmark. Uh, and you're again uh, neither in the possibility to speak. That's fine. Uh, no worries. But uh, glad that you were able to make it, and thank you for joining us. Uh, it's good to have you here. Then we have Stefania, Stefania Mude. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Stefania Modeo. I'm engagement and training officer at Open Air. Uh, I'm involved in several open science projects and in particular uh, in one with uh, Ellie that um, where, where we're working to advance uh, Argos to include uh, aspects uh, uh, related to reproduci reproducibility in uh, data management plans. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you, Stefania. Yes, um, this is an interesting thing. I, I'm very happy to, like, I'm looking forward to share what we will come up with uh, in this project with everyone here in the in this community. Let's see. <laughs> uh, we're 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 getting there. Um, okay, let's see, uh, Stefania, uh, Teresa. Well, um, thank you. My name is, <clears throat> sorry, my name is uh, Teresa Kieselbach. I'm research coordinator at uh, Umeå University Library in Sweden. I've been in this field for, well, about four and a half years. Um, yeah, if it comes to data management plans, I do much of our teaching work. I'm not so much the person behind the surface building templates and those sorts of things. So we have uh, so far used DMP online and we are excited to learn more about Argus. So that's going to be a very interesting journey, I believe. And uh, yeah, I'm grateful to be here and happy to learn more. Thank you so much. Thank you, Teresa. And I see that uh, Saha also um, says that uh, they're also working with DMP Online and would like to know more uh, about Argos. So that seems to be the, the theme <laughs> there. 
Um, and we have two new people that joined while we were, um, yeah, while we were doing the introductions. It's uh, again taking it from the alphabetical order that I see that Zoom provides. Ariovaldo Almeida. Hi. Would you like to share a few things about you? Who you are? Where you work? What interests you? Okay, I, I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm doing PhD in uh, Coimbra University. And, and I'm here to understand a little bit more about what you're doing about data because my, my whole life I've worked in companies that uh, manage uh, uh, enterprise data. That's why I'm here. Okay, we are focusing on the DMPs. Um, is that okay for you? Yes, I, I'd like to, let's say, uh, understand the, the, what, what I can do. Knowing about infrastructure, data infrastructure, I, I'd like to, to create a link between, uh, uh, let's say, data infrastructure with DMP. Okay, I see. Okay, then you're in the right place. Okay, because I was, uh, you know, confused. Maybe you're not. Maybe we're wasting your time. But no, we're not. No, uh, no. Okay, you're okay. Good. <laughs> I, I, I'm not in the right place. Please. Good. Nice to nice to meet you. Nice to have you here. Um, and then Paula, last but not least, I think you were, you were you entered later. Hi, hello. I entered late. Um. Do you, want, do you want me to give some context about the Portuguese, about Omino? Yes, please, please go ahead. I mean, I know you, <laughs> but not not everyone knows you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my name is Paula. I work at the University of Minho. And um, we have um, uh, an Argos Open DMP instance uh, at the university. Um, Within uh, the the a, pro a project with a, uh, with other um, institution, a polytechnic uh, project, a polytechnic uh, institute that we together are creating um, an instance, an open DMP instance for uh, to have uh, our Portuguese funder uh, template and to uh, in a long term to create a template for the for the university also among other services that we are creating to to help researchers um to to fulfill their uh, their work uh, within uh, research data management and their in, in their projects so thank you thank you Paula. and another one <laughs> another colleague joined um vicky i see you uh, joined now would you like to introduce yourself Hello, uh, Ellie. Uh, good uh, afternoon to all. Um, I'm a newcomer, <laughs> I could say. I'm uh, Vicky Rikaku from the Athens University of Economics and Business uh, Library and Information Center. Um, I am at the beginning of involving with Argos and all these um, topics. Uh, I have a regular uh, cooperation with Ellie in different uh, Teams here in Athens, and uh, I'm happy to join you today. <laughs> really happy. Happy to have you, you. Vicky. Uh, okay, I think that's all right. Sorry if I uh, did, do I miss. Oh, there's someone in the waiting room. Sorry, I admit. Um, let's see. Hi, Met Metan. Oh, connecting. Hello, Matan, can you hear us? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Hi, Matan. Hopefully you can hear us. Um, let's give a minute. Maybe if if you want, if you hear us, if you want to introduce yourself and write some things in the chat, that would be great um, to get to know you better. Okay, then. Uh, unfortunately, we could not understand Pascal. 
<laughs> I would I would like to to be capable to, to do that one day though. Uh, right, yes. So today's meeting is, you know, we're celebrating. This is an international open access week. Uh, most of us have been involved in open access, uh, moving to open science, which includes data, which includes software and all the different uh, elements. And again, I told you that I was, uh, I am actually at the RDA, not in Vienna. In Vienna is where my flight went, but I'm in Salzburg. Uh, so in Salzburg, and we had a very nice discussion yesterday in the session about the MPs, which I really wanted to bring uh, to our community as well and see um, how we can uh, better support researchers and institutions also and funders and essentially what we can do uh, in this ecosystem to um, promote data management plans and make it uh, a tool that it, it is not like a pain for, it's not perceived as a pain or a burden from researchers. Um, yes, uh, so I wanted to, uh, let me see. Maybe another thing that I could mention since since you want to know a few things uh, that are happening. Opener um, got um, a project a European Open Science Cloud project that focuses on creating the links between scientific knowledge graph, data management plans, and fair assessment tools. And we will be working with um, the community to establish uh, interoperability, the interoperability layer that is needed across those different tools, uh, and um, piloting uh, what we um, the outputs of our work, um, packaging them as a commons, and then piloting them in different countries and different domains. So that's uh, the project will start in 2024. Uh, and of course, uh, I can uh, every six months or uh, once in a while, maybe in our October meeting, which is a more of a discussion and celebration, we could also um, bring things from this project uh, that are relevant to DMPs into into our community to uh, to be aware of what's happening also, uh, but at the European level, of course, in in the context of the EOS. Uh, so we're very excited for this project to start in 2024. And that means that this will influence also the developments uh, in Argos and the Open DMP software that is behind it, because it will support some of those national uh, and less of the domain specific, but more national uh, pilots. Um, so maybe uh, we can, so I have like a, an idea of how the discussion discussion well the, the different things that the discussion uh, could have like we can say a few things about the technical uh, challenges that we would like to overcome maybe again this project could be a good opportunity to do that um, the policy related issues like what do we feel that could be done uh, from funders or institutions to support them and maybe the more um, procedural uh, who would like to uh, start, like uh, with their um, uh, their uh, their perception, their um, experience, and maybe their ideas of things that don't work and how to move it forward? Maybe Ali, uh, if um, if I can ask you here, um, you spoke about the the project that uh, will start uh, in uh, um, next year. Yes. Uh, that OpenAir is involved in the interoperability layer, but uh, for OpenAir is coordinating it. Oh, the OpenAir is coordinating. It's involved in every in all the project, not only interoperability. <laughs> yes. So maybe uh, for uh, some of the users uh, of the users that are here present um, the part of interoperability is uh, still something uh, that is difficult to understand and what is a knowledge graph it's not something that is uh, uh, known by all the users so since uh, today we have a lot of newcomers maybe we can explain uh, this kind of uh, jargon uh, that for uh, the newcomers is hard. So what, what is a knowledge graph maybe <laughs> is the first uh, step. And yes. then we can uh, also explain what is an interoperability layer. 
Well, a knowledge graph is a database with um, entities and links between them, let's say. Um, so uh, it um, like um, we we get opener at least the the, the graph that opener um, has and maintains is getting information from funders, from journals, from repositories, from uh, registries of any type, like protocols, uh, uh, data, software, whatever it is, getting all this information, deduplicating them, um, applying some text and data mining to um, um, ensure that um, yeah, everything like everything is classified um, well, and then gives them uh, creates this huge let's say graph of entities and links between them. Like the, the entities that we have at the moment are projects, researchers, organizations, funders, uh, outputs like data sets, publication software, DMPs. Um, and other outputs uh, that can we can see all the links between them. And these are also searchable through the Opener uh, Discovery Portal, which is explored at opener.eu. So Argos is actually the instance of OpenDMP software that is hooked in this graph and gets and gives also, so it's a two-way communication, uh, with this uh, graph. So we get information from the graph uh, through some um, APIs, so through some endpoints, and we make the searching of information for a repository where to deposit for a metadata standard, what metadata standard to use, easier inside the template so that the uh, researchers don't have to uh, click to a link and go to an external resource, for example, uh, and leave let's say, the, the, the platform. Uh, we make this ingestion, uh, retrieval, let's say, of information easier. And then uh, we also make sure that when we publish something, uh, we um, send this information to the knowledge graph, to this graph, so that we also enhance this graph with the information that the DMP holds. Uh, interoperability, uh, I mean, it's... Um, a minimum, uh, we have a standard that we are using. It's the provided by RDA, the RDA DMP common standard. Let me also add it here in the chat. Um, and this will be extended. And um, also uh, in the context of work that we're doing with Stefania in this project for reproducibility. Um, yes, so what, it, so what the standard does is provides a minimum set of entities and properties that um, should be common across all different DMP tool providers so that if we take the DMP and uh, download it from Argos and upload it on DMP online, for example, since many of you mentioned, then uh, no information will be lost. Not the, the information, at least, that the standard uh, requires or requests. Because DMP might have more information in it, but the standard has a minimum set. Is that uh, understood, maybe? Okay. Yes, uh, Jackie. Uh, yes, well, while I remember what I want to say, uh, um, you asked for uh, problems with uh, present uh, DMP tools. Uh, I can think of a few, uh, for, for example. Of DMPs, uh, of DMPs, uh, and, and not other tools. research output yes but uh, is specifically for DMPs uh, there is apparently very little uh, in uh, motivation or, or, or 
to publish your DMP. Mm. And uh, also very few DMPs have PIDs, which is necessary to connect them to the to the knowledge graph. Uh, so that's one problem. And uh, another huge problem is that the uh, most funder templates that, that are present are, are simply text-based and not compliant with, with the, the RDA DMP common standard. So, so these are two big problems. Uh, I know there are attempts being made also in the online that we've been using to, uh, for example, they've added recently research outputs. And if you, but again, uh, I think the motivation on on the uh, on the user side and the researchers to 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 put in something there is uh, minimal. Uh, so so uh, there has to be some some ways of motivating researchers to uh, and also uh, I mean one way of doing that would be to offer better uh, templates like like in Argos uh, or uh, so and make it easier to fill out those uh, DMPs uh, uh, and that what you're uh, where where you're heading is, and we appreciate that but uh, um, I think it will still for some time still uh, a lack in motivation for so you yeah, yeah thank you so your point is has two uh different things so one is the pids for dmps which is not very common and we offer that throughout because that this is true um and we offer that also as a software um, we we follow uh, the data side and the core vocabulary and then the other thing is the yeah i mean the awareness and the uh, incentives basically of researchers actually yes so today i was also in in a greek webinar um that was about um providing support to researchers uh on how to deposit their data in a data repository in, in a university repository and i had to talk the first part of the session was talking about this where to share your data where to deposit your data which is something that they can understand easier you know you go there you click upload they're not the, it's uploaded there's a form you add the title of the data you know you add the license blah blah, blah. Click submit and then someone uh, receives it, curated, a librarian curates it, and then it's available on this data repository. Right? This is something that they can understand. But when we talked about the DMPs, still seems to be like uh, the the topic that is very difficult for them. And I think it made me think at least that what we need probably apart from the tools that we haven't we, we support uh, and engage with researchers through the tools is to provide a curriculum or a sort of course or set of courses that breaks down the different elements of of a dmp in a very like simple uh way and straight way so that they can digest it i think i don't know if you have any examples uh teresa you said you mentioned that you train uh in this topic maybe you want to share uh, your experience and examples that we could also adapt um thank you um well we have Colin, I, I would say we have good experiences from the workshops that we give um um the su success rate is not 100%. So um, if you look at our course evaluations, there are still people after a workshop who do not, who say that they do not know who to ask if they have questions about our DMP tool. But um, 
I think the majority of people um, feel that they that they can write a data management plan, at least get started with it. Um, so uh, I think uh, in in the workshops that we give, I, I try to explain that uh, data management plans and research plans are different things. They have different structures. They are different uh, um, um, yeah, points that go into these documents um, and those sorts of things. And um, one thing that I find important is um, giving them a demonstration showing how to use um, a template um, and showing them that it's possible to write a, a draft of the data management plan in about half an hour if one has a question-based template. And at this point, I would like to say thank you to Joachim because they were first with question-based templates in Sweden and they shared their template with us so that we could use it to build our template. And uh, um, that makes the work to write data management plans easier. We cannot do it without free text, um, not completely, but um, in, in many cases, um, that makes work easier. Um, we have not come to the point that we really uh, uh, can offer uh, a tool for data management plan that makes the administration that researchers have to do easier for them. Um, we have some uh, attempts to do that. Um, there is a, a project going on uh, in the uh, consortium of the Swedish National Data Services at the KTH and Chalmers. Um, and they look into um, yeah, machine readable data management plans, but with other tools. They have DMP Online and Data Stewardship Wizard. So um, they have made some progress, but um, it's not ready to be rolled out um, to a larger audience. Um, I've also seen a very nice example at uh, um, a university college. They uh, combined, uh, they, they created a, they have a home build tool where researchers can, on the one hand, write a data management plan, and on the other hand, report processing of personal data. So they do two things in one step. And apparently that is very much appreciated. So um, that is also one of the questions that we would like to explore. To what extent can we integrate the work to write data management plans into the administration of our university? Um, yeah, for different reasons, to make life easier for the researchers, um, but also to get approval from other important persons at the university, our lawyers, security experts, and so on. Um, and starting from there, I think uh, we can look, how can we um, integrate other open science tools, repositories, or for instance. Yeah, but uh, if, if we come back to teaching, I think an important point is, I would say, starting with research plans, because most researchers are good at writing proposals and research plans, they know that, and then say, okay, if you write a data management plan, we use a different structure, different things go into it. These are the differences, and um, that seems to help. Thank you. Thank you very much. You also covered a lot of things, <laughs> uh, and thank you, yes, uh, definitely um it should be like um in, from a technical point of view it should be a tool that connects and supports the administration uh, because there are so many different steps uh, for researchers to take and uh, to uh, manage their data different committees an ethical committee for example that they have to consult data access uh, maybe committee and uh, yeah different different people inside the organization so that's something that uh, we support and this is actually um, yeah this 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 we support and you will we, we can we can show an example 
of how we do that later this year uh, in the, the new release. Um, I like what you said, uh, Teresa, for the um, the local tool that you can add your information in one tool and then have two different types of reports. That's also uh, something that for sure supports. So we need to make sure that uh, we we help uh, researchers also uh, in that um, um, in that matter. Um, and yes, in terms of the training, um, show uh, examples uh, of uh, how they can better their work, basically their, their efforts. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else that would like to contribute to the conversation? Uh, for example, um, Aria Valgo, uh, since Teresa also mentioned integrations with administrative, um, the administrative life, life cycle, let's say, maybe that's something that um, looks familiar, um, similar to your case. We cannot hear you. You're muted. Uh, still muted. Okay. Yes. Uh, to, to be honest with you all, uh, uh, I'm here trying to find a way. Uh, I always worked, as I said before, I always worked with uh, uh, data uh, infrastructure. And uh, I know that, uh, for for instance, uh, uh, one of the the goals of the, the all this project, like open air, Argos, and, and so on, uh, they use or they manage the data to be uh, stored in any place. I don't I don't care about this. And I, I'd like to uh, let's say use my understanding in uh, data infrastructure to, uh, let's say, to find a way to be more productive, to more to be more secure, and so on. Uh, and, and I try to understand uh, what this uh, data management plans uh, need to do. Of, of course, I understand that they, they, they one of the, the, the main reasons to, to have this is to have a, a common way to, to exchange information between uh, 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 researchers and so on. And I'm trying, I, I'm here trying to find, uh, is there a way for, uh, to use my understanding in the infrastructure to, or, or be more productive in, in ways to, because today, what, what, what you see today in terms of data management in general, uh, is that uh, every day there seems to be a new way to to uh, store data, and of course, and we are uh, seeing all the time uh, data growing and growing and growing, and there has to be a way to understand that. Uh, let's say in five years or ten years, maybe we will have another way to. to store data in the future, or at, at least for some period of time, I don't, I don't know. Uh, is there a way to use our understanding how to manage data uh, to be ready for the future? Yeah, I don't know if you, uh, uh, I see. you, you misunderstand, but I, I, I'm here to, to do, I'm trying to understand the way you, you do things to maybe, to help you see what you're going to do in the future. That's my, so, my main reason to be here. I see. So you see DMPs as um, the 
tools and the let's see yes yeah, so the tools that will show you uh where like the storage capacity like how it grows and evolves maybe and where it, where like the services that are used um the size of the data so you're more interested in on on the let's say tracking of the storage through um monitoring the dmp's evolution let's say so you want to, okay. to know yes so, the, so in the section for example a dmp yes talks about costs talks about a size of data where they are stored the, the service so you're more interested on in that okay i yes. now now i understand okay yes you can yeah for sure um but but that i am trying to understand this environment you know i I'm trying to understand this environment to see if the uh, the knowledge that I have today can help in the future of mm. uh, in, in terms of uh, my my feeling uh, uh, open uh, access uh, open data open science is everything that I I think that it is really the the the, the need for the future. For mm. on the, for the humanity, I, I'm not not saying, uh, thinking about only about me or about uh, some institution. Uh, I think that is very important for the humanity. Yeah, uh, definitely. Thank you. Uh, I think though that your your approach is more on the exploitation of the DMPs than of the uh, creation of the DMPs, which yeah. they relate though they relate because for example in Argos or the software you can have a, a, a section where it is about storage and you can add as many questions as you want make it as specific or as minimum <laughs> and minimal as you want uh, and connect it to the storage capacity of the university for example so that you know uh, at the beginning of the research uh, activity what they will need, the researchers will need, because they will have added, like, I don't know, I need five terabytes. This is very <laughs> extreme example. Uh, and then at the beginning, you see the actual consumption and what they, they I mean, what they used. You compare and then, yeah, th then you exploit, basically. You, you, you do your own analytics and, yeah. Um, okay, I see, I see. Okay. Thank you. Um, Joachim. Yes, I think it was very interesting, uh, Ariovaldo's uh, perspective here, because you're actually touching upon some of the possible incentives uh, for the from the researcher perspective to make infrastructure and DMPs as part of the infrastructure into something that ceases to be a, a hindrance to doing research, but actually is perceived as a benefit. This, these tools uh, help me keep track of my own research and access other uh, research data and research outputs that could be, be, be usable uh, for me as a researcher. So, so I see both these uh, measures of, uh, of access and security uh, and ordering of your <laughs> of all your data because uh, many researchers today have their data spread out and, and their outputs spread out on uh, uh, private hard disks uh, and the cloud servers and whatnot, and not uh, having actually complete overview of what they have. So if uh, DMPs could uh, actually, uh, I mean, serve these purposes to, to, to make life easier for, uh, for researchers, then they could, uh, I mean, uh, then I think they would. There would be more incentives to sh uh, also to share DMPs uh, and publish them and make them part of the knowledge graph. So, so, so I, I think you're on to something important here, Ariova. Mm. And I also see uh, Alan uh, has a comment. I think the, he he writes. 
Uh, I think the main challenges around DMPs are more social, political than technical. I tend to agree. We can design very smart tools. Uh, it will not help much if people are not interested in using them. Yes, researchers are understandably not super excited by DMPs, whether they are word processing documents or online questionnaires. In a past Love Data Weeks, we have produced short movies with horror stories about loss of data, missed deadlines, etc. That was quite fun, actually, but I think it would be much better if we could show success stories. Yes. Researcher testimonies where they could explain where the DMP has been useful for them in terms of time, energy. I'd rather avoid the topic of money too close to the grant application situation. Yes. Um, so success stories, that's also, yes, I think, I think that's also something that we need to, <laughs> you don't have a success story though yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, we can, we can find, uh, success stories. I'm pretty sure that, um, we have many, not for the whole DMP, but, you know, for a specific uh, area that the DMP tackles um, and we can build on, on that um, yeah but I, I, I really like your uh, your comment you're uh, right um, so since you Okay, bye, bye, Saha and Paula. Thank you for joining. Um, but yes, in terms of so since you mentioned political um, influence, let's say, and, and how things, uh, yeah, that don't play well for for DMPs. One thing that was mentioned yesterday in the session was the lack of understanding uh, researchers, their lack of understanding what kind of detail should go into the DMP. Uh, so they don't know, they might know where to start, which is what Teresa mentioned, but they don't know where, where to stop. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's uh, something that was mentioned yesterday. Uh, and the idea, the idea, the um, discussion was like, can funders support this? Can funders um, or the community um, present what uh, what uh, level of detail they um, search? How will they evaluate the the DMPs? Because this is closed. This is a very closed, let's say, activity. Uh, it's not open uh, how the DMPs are evaluated and what is perceived a good DMP, which may may maybe also um, uh, is what you were saying, uh, Alan, with the success stories. Um, but who is the person to say that this is a good DMP? Isn't the funders and the institutions that have the policies? Let's uh, open for discussion. <laughs> Who wants to take uh, take the mic? Maybe I can start because I ah okay. Sorry. I see. Sorry, I saw a hand. Yes, Teresa. Um, thank you. Um, that is difficult. Um, because we do not have. We do not have evaluation criteria for data management plans. Um, I think we can give advice to researchers if we see that there are some things that obviously are not going to work. But um, as we so far do not have many success stories, I think we were desperately looking for researchers who were who were willing to share their good experiences from writing data management plans and so forth. We haven't found them. Oh. <laughs> Which does not mean that they don't exist, but they do not, uh, um, they do not uh, seem to be uh, in our near environment. Let's put it like this. Um, 
Yeah. So um, at at the moment, it comes down to formal aspects. Um, so basically, administration or or legal requirements fulfilled are the formal. Um, policies of a funder fulfilled if it comes to data management plan. Um, we can try to uh, um, share things that did not work for us when we worked with research and where data management plan possibly could help. But um, we do not really have examples where we can show thanks to having a data management plan, this project went much more smoothly um, than it otherwise would have been the case. So, um, yeah. Um, if it comes now to our situation in, in Sweden, we have some major funders who require data management plans, but um, they don't want to see them. It's not only in Sweden. Yeah, I think it's the, so that's up to the um, 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 universities and the departments to make sure that data management plans are there. Um, yeah, and that makes it also a difficult um, to make make progress. Yeah. So sorry, yes. we don't have an, an a real success story yet. We very much would like to have one. Um, and um, I think that links a bit back to what I said earlier. Perhaps we can come closer to success stories if um, researchers see that writing a data management plan reduces the burden of administration. Mm. Um, yeah, that that might be a way that mm -hmm. works. Perhaps. Thank you. Thank you, Verissa. And I see um, Joachim has uh, a hand up. Yes, uh, connecting to what Teresa just said. Uh, so uh, since uh, the funders are not interested in seeing the, the DMPs and evaluate them in any way, so uh, this task is now in principle in Sweden uh, on on the head of departments shoulders and they don't have time or or to to really assume this but in our local uh, template at Stockholm University we have a, a checkbox that that the researcher is supposed to fill in uh, to stating that the head of department has, uh, seen my DMP and approved it as uh, fulfilling the the requirements from the funder. So that, that's one way. And we also have developed a, a schematron validation schema, which it tries to evaluate uh, the DMP on uh, not the DMP actually, but uh, the full what. Uh, the 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 statements in the DMP would entail in terms of uh, of complying with the fair principles. So, given that they fulfill everything that they say they will in the DMP, they will get a uh, uh, a certain fair score on on all the F A I and R uh, uh, levels. Uh, but we have not as yet uh i mean the the plan was to to communicate this evaluation back to the researchers for uh, for feedback but uh, we have not uh, done that yet since we have to we are still developing this tool but and also i mean uh, as as the developer of it, I, I tend to think that who am I to to do this evaluation uh, when it actually is not uh, on our it's not our task to to do it. But uh, the only reason I, I would 
do it, it would be to if I knew that it could be of help to the to the researchers themselves. So, but but we're still thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yes, and I see uh, the uh, Alan has books. Okay, has another comment. Um, transparency wasn't the right word uh, to use. Uh, uh, I don't mean the various actors are keeping the process obscure on purpose, but the information that can probably be shared certainly doesn't circulate as efficiently as it could. That's true. This makes it difficult for everybody, researchers, support teams, funders, institutions to learn from each other. Yes. And since you mentioned, um, uh, Joachim, since you mentioned the fair uh, compliance, this is also, again, uh, what, what does it mean? Like they ask about fair, fair, like apply fair principles, but how we can support the how we can support the uh, when do we know that this is we reach the compliance? We don't know. Uh, I mean, as researchers <laughs> and and the school provides, I mean, we don't know. Uh, so this is something that for sure I agree that uh, we should. Um, uh, uh, we should give more attention to, let's say, in the future. And actually, in the context of the new project that I mentioned, we are going to uh, get the input from different funders across Europe, um, see if they can help us <laughs> understand what they want <laughs> so that we can, you know, draw a line and say, okay, this is the minimum that you do, and this is the nice to have. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Let, let's, let's see. Um, Sorry, must leave. Yes, bye, um, bye, Johnny. Nice to have you here. Yeah, and I see that we're actually um, it's it's three Central European time, so we should be wrapping up. Uh, I don't know if you have any last um, points that you would like uh, to be heard or address. Okay, then, thank you very much. And you will see each other in a month from now. Uh, and we'll we have many things to, to share in terms of new developments that some of you wanted. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll go back to the Argos and Open DMP um, focus, let's say discussion uh, and demo uh, next month. So thank you very much. I really enjoyed this discussion. I hope we had more time, but let's see. Maybe uh, in the future we can uh, we can we have new opportunities. Bye, everyone. Nice bye, bye. Thanks Thank for you. joining, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.